attached to it and you give your heart and soul and you, you dedicate your life to this character and to see it play out on the big screen is so rewarding and to see your reaction means that we're doing something right and trust me when I say that that is the tip of the iceberg. There is so much more in this world. You will be on your feet, you'll be screaming and and it's, it's I, honestly, I, I want to tell you everything. I can't. Someone over there will kill me. Now we've got a we've got a full concert vibe here, which I love. This is seeing this with this was everything. We do have Mexico City. I know it's a concert over there too. I want to experience how they're doing. So we got picture eight. Oh, there I am. Hey, back again. We got we got Hector Radio. Hello. Say it's a silent film. We're really adjusting. It's that's yeah. the big trick. Oh, we can hear someone now. <laughs> oh, yeah, someone. oh, there we go. Oh, this is great. <laughs> okay, we got to let's make up for sound here. There we go. Okay, now I have some questions from fans both here and in Mexico City. We're gonna start in Mexico City. Okay. I'm gonna follow your lead. I'm gonna stand or sit. I'm gonna stand. I'm gonna stand. I'm feeling the energy. It feels weird to sit. I can't sit. I'm so excited. Okay, we're gonna start. If Mexico City can hear me, we're gonna start with Ileana Pina Ramirez. Can we get a hello from Ileana? Conceptually, maybe. <laughs> We got dreams. I'm gonna ask it anyway, and hopefully she, she can say hi. I love this question. What are you hoping to teach young Marvel fans through your character? <laughs> what? Wow, that's a big question. Open strong. I'm sorry. Well, I went James Lipton on you. Huge question. Wow. Um, what am I hoping to teach people with Spider-Man? Or my three movies? Um, that with great power comes great results. <laughs> that's why it's Spider-Man. The world's changing, everyone has a voice, and we have a responsibility to do the right thing and help out our neighbor and look after one another. And that's exactly what Spider-Man stands for. So with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we've got another one in Mexico City from Jurgen Rocha on Via, who asks, what has been your favorite villain to go face to face with in the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe? Ooh. Another easy question. Softballs first. The problem is, is they're all my friends. <laughs> I think my favorite has to be Alfred Molina. Yeah. Working with him on this film was so fun because he was so blown away by the improvement with all the technological advancements that 
filmmaking has made. You know, back in the day, I think it was 2002 when he made his Spider-Man movie. 2004, thank you. <laughs> this is You're the room. hired. This is the room. <laughs> they, um, the arms that he used to have were puppeteered by four different people. And nowadays, obviously, we don't do that anymore because it's very time consuming. So it's all done with CG. And watching him be very free as Doc Ock was really kind of rewarding because back in the day, if he wanted to go over here, he'd have to tell four different people, guys, I'm going to step over here and then you follow me and then you get this one to do that. So to see him kind of have the freedom to bring Doc Ock back to life in a new way was amazing. But then also, Fred is one of the greatest people I've ever worked with. He was on this thing called a toothpick rig, which is like, um, it's like a long crane. On one end is counterbalance weights and on the other end is a platform. And Fred would stand on that platform and then they would push him through the set and it would simulate the legs carrying him. But what was funny is, is that he didn't have control over where he went. So we'd be fighting each other. I'd be like webbing him and he'd be hitting me with his arms. It looks ridiculous on the day. It's not cool at all. And uh, he'd be, they'd go cut. And he'd be like, so Tom, tell me how's your weekend? What have you been up to? So, so. And then all of a sudden he would just sort of take off. <laughs> and he'd continue talking to me, but he'd be like, I'm sorry, dear boy. I've got to go over here. I'm trying to reset. <laughs> For me, working with Fred was a real honour, and um, and I think I can say this now because he's in the trailer. But Willem Dafoe, yeah! that was, uh, I remember my first rehearsal. I was with Harry, and we went to the soundstage. And I, I can talk about this, right? He's in the trailer. Okay. And there's a collective. Yeah, I just. <laughs> My whole body just went, oh, I'm gonna die. That's why we're standing. But the first rehearsal I had with him uh, was pretty surreal. It was pretty surreal for reasons I can't really talk about because I want you to experience it in the theatre. Uh, but it was pretty incredible and he's a wonderful guy and he put me to shame. He, you should see how good at yoga he is, man. Like, I'm supposed to be Spider-Man, I'm supposed to be really flexible and can do all of this sort of stuff. We would do scenes, and the next morning I could hardly get out of bed, and this guy sprung out of bed. Not that we were sleeping in the same bed. <laughs> he would tell me stories about it later. But he was amazing, he was wonderful. It's like Alan sir, man. Yeah, he's incredible. Now, as someone who grew up in this world, what was it like meeting Defoe for the first time, Lena for the first time, just you as an individual. What was that like? How do you process that? Yeah, it was actually a funny story when I met Willem for the first time because obviously at that time, all of the villains in the film, it was a huge secret that they were in the film. So they would walk around set with these cloaks on. And naturally, you know, these guys were very excited to be coming back and bringing these roles back to life that they came to set a week before they started shooting to just see what it was like. Meet John, meet myself, hang out on set and have a good time. And I just sort of bumped into this guy in a cloak and was like, watch out, mate. <laughs> and he took his hood off and I almost like got really scared. I was like, oh shit, the goblin's here. <laughs> but he was lovely, he was really wonderful and, and a, a real joy to work with. There's a story that I would love to tell, but I just cannot tell yet. But I will do, and you will hear it one day. It's very exciting. Um, but it, again, it was incredible, it was mind blowing. Remember this moment, we'll call in that story. I'll be like, that was the one. Oh, you'll, you'll hear it. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go to our LA audience here. We've got, I love this. This is from Liz, who very specifically said, from New York, but visiting LA. And I feel like that's a Spider-Man moment. Like, you're like, by the way, I'm from the land of Spidey. All right, we've got, if you could choose one scene from playing Peter Parker to reshoot and experience again, wow. what would you choose? I can't talk about it. <laughs> Genuinely, there's one scene, well, there's two scenes in this film. Well, there's three scenes. There's three scenes. And I would do anything to go back and reshoot them. They're perfect and they don't need to be reshot, but the experience on the day of being there, this sort of, this true, moment in cinematic history is, is about to come true and we were there on the day making it happen and it was crazy it was crazy and i would love to tell you because honestly it, i've got some people saying no you want to know i'll tell you only but it was 
it was amazing. And I, I really think you guys will be proud of what John Watts and what Kevin Feige and Amy Pascal and Tom Mossman and all of our producers have put together and managed to accomplish. Because honestly, when they first pitched me the movie, I was like, that's never gonna work. There's no way you're gonna be able to get that done. And they did, and they did an amazing job. <laughs> I gotta say, lifelong Spider-Man fan, to see your reverence for this room, to see your emotion about this experience, and to hear this moment, those days on set, did it feel like, was there a palpable historic moment? Did you feel that on the day, as well as reflecting on it here? Yeah, it actually took everyone involved a while to get over what was happening. It was, it was mental. <laughs> I don't want to know, so I'm gonna wait, but I'm gonna remember this moment. All right, we've got one in LA from Francis Dominic asking, what is your most surreal moment while filming? Maybe one you can share. <laughs> I hate doing press for these movies, it's a nightmare. <laughs> the most surreal experience from the first two. We'll go there, it's safe. Oh, well, I can now talk about those all day long. Let me try and think about this one. I can talk about this so much. <laughs> I think one for me, and you're going, your guys are going to be like, oh, we've heard this story. But um, when I first met Jake on set, and he came to set for Spider-Man 2, and he had like, not a meltdown, but he was a little bit nervous at the way Marvel make movies, and it's very different to anything anyone has ever experienced outside of that world. And I remember looking up to one of my idols, you know, he's one of my favorite actors, and being like, it's okay, man, like, we can, we can figure this out together, and- You can fly. Yeah, you can fly, you're Mysterio. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that was pretty surreal. Again, guys, listen, I'd love to tell you everything. You know I would. <laughs> Actually, you know what, on that moment, there's this amazing clip of you, like, soothsaying. There's a, there's a moment you're talking about, like, Jake's your favorite actor, and you want to do this, and you, you have this thing where you're like, I'm a manifest that. When you first had a conversation with Jake, was there a part of you that was like, how did I do this? Because it keeps happening. Yeah, because why did he work with Jake? We were like, I, I remember saying to this, they asked me, who would you who would you want to work with? And I said, Jake Gyllenhaal. And then two days later, Zadea and I went to Crossroads and Jake walked in and joined us. I was like, this is weird. And then the following day, he went to have lunch with John Watts at Crossroads, and while he was pitching the movie, all the lights cut out. Like, how Mysterio is that? <laughs> and, but yeah, I, I, I mean, I manifested being in Spider-Man. Like, when I was, I don't know, 13 years old, I was on a red carpet, and they asked me, who would you play? And I said, I'd love to be Spider-Man. And now I'm about to release that. <laughs> The moment I saw you carrying a DVD player into your Spider-Man, took no time. Right. That moment, I was like, right. man, they did it. Nice. Uh, it's beautiful to see. We're gonna go back to Mexico City with Ramon Ramirez Malvarez, who asks, now knowing, oh, I love this one. Now knowing what you know, how important is it to never reveal the identity of a superhero? These questions, man. <laughs> uh, now knowing what I know, I mean, it's interesting. I always feel like Peter Parker has kind of had some sort of parallel with my life and what's going on. And it's no secret that when this happens to you, your life changes and there are certain things that you can't do anymore. And this film kind of explores the adverse effects of fame and what happens to someone, especially at a young age, how it can affect your life for better or for worse. And you know, I've had a wonderful experience because you guys have been so gracious and wonderful and looked after me as fans. But there are people out there who haven't had the same experience and Peter Parker, unfortunately, is going through that. And, and I forgot. <laughs> the, what would you do knowing now what it's like to have an identity revealed? Like what would, what was your, what's the cautionary feel? I just, I, I always think that if you want to tell someone something, you should tell them yourself. I think when the power is taken away from you, you know, whether it's a secret you want to tell someone, if they find out on their own, it's always so much worse. <laughs> you need to just be honest and let people know. So I think if Peter Parker had made an announcement like an I am Iron Man sort of, yeah. it would have been a little bit easier for him. We've got one more Mexico City. I'm hoping we, we have a connection there. This is Maria Jose Carranza Soto. If we do, can we get a hello? Maybe. Not gonna, oh. It's such an interesting sound when it's like pieces of sound. I hear the zeal. Yes! Wave for us! It worked! Victory! All right. 
<laughs> a fantastic question. Oh, over the years, a lot of people have played Peter Parker. What do you think you've imprinted on the role and character? This is really tough. I think for me, my biggest thing when coming into this world was to really, really hone in on the sort of youthfulness of what it means to be a teenager. You know, I really wanted to lean into the idea that this is a 15-year-old superhero. That meaning there are lots of stuff that you'll see throughout the films where Peter Parker does everyday things, but in a way that Spider-Man would do them. And I think that's really interesting, because you all know, if we were Spider-Man and you were sitting on the TV and the remote was too far away, you'd web the remote and, and fling it back. So for me, making Peter Parker really youthful and authentic and a real teenager, a real high schooler, was really important. And I think John Watts did a great job of bringing that to life. Um, so for me, I think the one thing that I have able, was able to bring, and albeit I, am a te I was a teenager at the time, was making him very youthful. I love that, man. These are great questions. Mexico City. Thank you. Proud. We've got another one from LA. We've got Luke. And Luke, where we got Luke in here? Woo! Uh, Luke, stand up for us. There's Luke. Up, Luke. Great shirt, man. Luke asks, what was the hardest day of filming and why? All of these are things I feel like he can't tell. What was the hardest <laughs> day of filming? There's one fight scene in this film. You're going to see a style of fighting in this film that you've never seen in the Spider-Man movie before. And, you know, that was down to our stunt coordinator, George Cottle and, and Jackson. They designed these fights to shock you guys, to really put you on your back foot. And when we were shooting this one scene in particular, it's like a sort of, I reckon it's a 35 beat fight scene between myself and one of the villains. And we shot it over and over and over again, over three or four days. And I remember my knuckles were all bloody and, and I was knackered and we were fighting and fighting. And it was, and in all fairness, it was awful. It was one of the, it was, it was such a difficult time, but in the film, it's so spectacular and it is so overwhelming and you've never seen Peter Parker quite like it. And I'm really excited to see what you guys think. We got, we got our final two questions and, and one's from me because I've always wanted to know, but our last one here from LA, we've got Taya. Taya, stand up for us. All right. Yeah, I Taya. All right, I love this question. What is your favorite characteristic of Spider-Man? Peter Parker. I know that doesn't make sense. It does. But it does. <laughs> Spider-Man's biggest superpower is Peter Parker, and that's because of his humility. That's what sets him apart from the rest, is that he's always able, he's unable to not do the right thing. And for me, as an actor, bringing that to life has been so fun, because it's sometimes incredibly frustrating. Sometimes I, I read these scripts or I perform these scenes, and I just want Peter Parker to be selfish, just one time. Because he always, he always puts everybody else first and therefore he kind of, he kind of shits on himself. Um, so for me, it's his humility and, and therefore Peter Parker. All right, my final question, because I've wondered for so long, my two favorite characters are Spider-Man and Deadpool. They're the guys. You're very well known for this iconic dance. The umbrella experience is something we have experienced many times on the internet. Let's give it up for umbrella. So my question is, in a, in a step up universe, if you were to have a dance battle opposite Deadpool, first song you pick, dance battle Deadpool. What do you reckon? <laughs> yeah. Dance battle, <laughs> Spider-Man, Deadpool. Okay, uh, dance battle against Deadpool. Can he dance? Replay. Yes. Replay. Replay. Yes. Perfect. Replay. Yes. Replay. Okay, it's happening. Now we have a head cannon. All right. So you wanted to do something before, and there's so much security around it, it wasn't an option. But now I feel like. Uh, Did we figure it out? Can we do? It? Can we play it again? You want to watch it again? Yeah. Okay, I promise I won't cry this time. All right, let's do it. But we've got to do something first with everyone, so including we need Mexico City. Let's get a selfie. You want to do a selfie? Yeah, let's do it. Let's get everyone here. Keep it, I'll keep it. Woo! We're going to get the screen. Mexico City here. Yeah, there we go. There's everybody. You can take it.
Thank you guys. I, thank you for everyone in Mega Star. I appreciate it. I'm sorry I can't be there. All right, now there's some people right here. Uh, Mexico City, please give it up. We're gonna say bye to Mexico City's feed. You guys have been amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. And back here in the room, LA. Let's hear it. You guys want a selfie? Right. All right, Harry's gonna take it. Yeah. Oh, you're gonna video it. All right, we're ready. Three, two, one, let's go! Okay, guys, let's watch this again, shall we? Yeah. Let's watch it again. I love you too, guys. Thank you.